United States is gradually approaching doomsday. Terrifying Bible prophecy is fulfilling. An extraordinary event unfolded during the recent fast of Muslims at Mecca, leading many to perceive it as a prophetic omen, while some view it as a miraculous occurrence. Are these phenomena related to prophetic omens, or does it signal doomsday? Before starting, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that thumbs up button and press the bell to receive the latest information from the world. Signs of the times, the Christ-like meaning behind insect invasions in the vast landscapes of America. We have witnessed how the smallest of God's creatures can become heralds of profound change. Consider the gypsy moth, an invader in its own right, whose swarms descend upon our forests and farmlands, transforming lush greenery into barren branches. This moth, not unlike the biblical locusts, speaks to us of the delicate balance of creation and the repercussions of our stewardship of the earth. The mountain pine beetle, with its insatiable appetite, carves through the heart of pine forests, leaving behind a legacy of decay. This echoes the words of Joel 4, what the locust swarm has left the great locusts have eaten, what the great locusts have left the young locusts have eaten, what the young locusts have left other locusts have eaten. Here we are reminded that the impact of one small creature can be vast, and that our actions have consequences that ripple through the web of life. Yes, and it's terrible. The southern pine beetle is wreaking havoc across Suffolk County. It feels like a fire trap ready to happen. The fire ant invasion in the southern realms of the United States, with its fiery sting and relentless spread, prompts us to consider the words of Proverbs 6. 6. 8. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. These ants teach us about community, hard work, and the wisdom of preparation yet also the challenges when the balance of nature is disturbed by new arrivals. The cotton ball worm, a pest that brings farmers to their knees, mirrors the plague sent upon Egypt, not to bring despair, but to remind us that with faith and perseverance, solutions and salvation can be found. It is a lesson from Genesis 41 where Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream and stores grain in preparation for famine. It is in these struggles that we are called to seek divine guidance and to find innovative paths to nurture and protect the blessings entrusted to us. And how can we speak of the challenges of nature without mentioning the West Nile virus spread by the smallest of insects, the mosquito? This has brought to mind the plagues that were visited upon the ancient Egyptians, a reminder from Numbers 1649, but 14,700 people died from the plague in addition to those who had died because of Korah. In the face of such trials, we are urged to come together in prayer, science, and community to protect and heal. The Asian longhorn beetle, an intruder from distant lands, speaks to us of globalization's unintended consequences, urging vigilance and unity in preserving our ecological sanctuaries. It evokes the message from Leviticus 25, 23, 24. The land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine and you reside in my land as foreigners and strangers. Throughout the land that you hold as a possession, you must provide for the redemption of the land. Each of these insects, in their own way, offers a parable. They are not merely pests, but messengers calling us to reflect on our place in creation, our responsibilities, and our reliance on the providence of the Almighty. In their multitudes and in their impacts, they challenge us to consider our actions, to humble ourselves, and to seek harmony with the world that God has created. It is through these challenges that we find the opportunity for growth, for unity, and for a deeper faith in the wisdom and mercy of our Creator. In every corner of the globe, these insects and creatures, whether through their creation, life, 
or the problems they present, evoke stories and principles from the scriptures. They are constant reminders of our place in creation, the consequences of our actions, and the need for a symbiotic relationship with all life. Their very existence calls us to a deeper communion with the Creator, a reaffirmation of faith, and a dedication to the delicate balance of life that He has ordained. Each insect invasion, each ecological shift is an opportunity to witness God's power, to heed His lessons, and to recommit ourselves to the stewardship of His wondrous creation, prophetic sign. Weird insect plague invades Mecca in the hollowed streets of Mecca. An event of biblical proportions commanded the world's gaze as a multitude of insects, like a living tapestry, blanketed the skies. This marvel, a visual psalm of the natural order, coincides with Ramadan's solemnity, a holy synthesis of faith and introspection from Muslims worldwide. It is in this convergence of the sacred and the seemingly mundane that we find God's fingerprints, a reminder that His wonders are not bound by the confines of human understanding. This phenomenon may stir in the Christian soul a contemplative silence akin to the psalmist's awe in Psalm 8, 3, minus 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them. It ushers in a call to remember our smallness and God's grandeur, to stand humble and reverent before the spectacle of His might. The scriptures speak vividly of such signs. The locust plagues of Egypt, a divine demonstration of power and a herald of liberation. Similarly, the congregation in Mecca, encircling the Kaaba in devout worship, finds itself amidst a living parable. Could this be a celestial metaphor, an echo of the past reminding us of the future? In these swarms there is a whisper, a celestial murmur calling faithful to ponder the complexity of God's universe. The Kaaba, which has stood the test of time as a beacon of faith, faces this natural occurrence challenging the faithful to find harmony within chaos, to seek the face of God, even when the heavens seem to unleash turmoil. For believers in Christ, such events may be interpreted as revelatory, not of impending judgment, but of God's enduring presence in all creation. As it is written in Romans 1.20, For since the creation of the world God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. In the wonder of creation, we see a canvas painted by the divine, a call to acknowledge God's sovereignty over earth and sky. Let this moment inspire us to solidarity with our fellow seekers of the divine across the globe. Let it be an opportunity to extend the hand of fellowship, understanding that while our paths differ, our awe before the mysteries of the Almighty is shared. Let the lessons of this natural spectacle draw us nearer to the teachings of Jesus, who spoke often in parables, using the elements of nature to impart wisdom and truth. Thus, in the presence of such marvels, we are invited to embrace the humility that Christ himself displayed to serve and love one another as stewards of his creation. For in every grain of sand, in every unexpected swarm, there is the potential for spiritual awakening, for realizing that God's power is without limit and His mercies are new every morning. So as the dusk settles over Mecca and the faithful continue their prayers, let Christians around the world join in contemplation of our own place in God's infinite plan. May this event be a beacon not of division, but of unity under the gaze of an omnipotent God who calls all people to himself in myriad ways through signs and wonders that transcend human language, but speak directly to the heart. Let us hold fast to the promise given in Deuteronomy 31. 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, 
For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. As we edge closer to the solar eclipse on April 8, 2024, the wild weather of April 2nd feels like a warning straight out of a movie, hinting at tough times. In a big wake-up call from above, the day kicks off with a bang as storms roll in, making it clear that something major is brewing, kind of like nature's own dramatic build-up to the eclipse that's got everyone talking. Shelbyville and the surrounding areas better buckle up because there's a monster storm heading their way. It's packing winds so strong they could rip trees right out of the ground and hail the size of coins, stuff straight out of the old stories. This morning, there's an electric charge in the air like we're all waiting for the other shoe to drop. The winds telling tales of ancient storms that change the course of history. And while tornadoes might seem like a distant threat, by this afternoon, we could be facing something that feels like it's straight out of a prophet's vision. Watching this storm head towards Franklin County is a real deal reminder that when it comes to weather, expect the unexpected. Places like Greensburg and Columbia need to be on high alert and get ready for what's coming. Right now, for the southern half of Hamilton County as well as Boone, also Kenton, and Campbell counties. So it's just a severe thunderstorm warning right now over Butler and Warren counties. The sky is already throwing a fit with rain pouring down like it's trying to start a flood and thunder that sounds like it could be God getting our attention this morning. Storms are just a preview of the main event slated for later today. The weather folks are saying we're in for a moderate risk of some seriously nasty storms, the kind that could make history. They're talking about winds that could twist up the landscape and hail that's a heads up from the heavens. And when the sun starts to dip, we might just see the kind of show that gets you thinking about the big picture and how everything connects back to the big guy upstairs. The lands have been marked by a moderate risk, a divine sign of the potential for significant tempests, perhaps as formidable as those that once parted the Red Sea. The forecast speaks of storm-bearing winds capable of bending creation to its will and hail as a reminder of heaven's might. Yet, it is in the afternoon and evening that a crescendo of divine spectacle is anticipated, urging reflection on one's place within God's vast creation and to seek shelter not only from the storm, but in the steadfast love and protection of the Creator. The minuscule yet mighty insect stands as a testament to the complex web of life that the Creator has spun, from the dense forests of South America to the sprawling savannas of Africa, and from the fertile plains of North America to the tropical climes of Oceania. Insects have shaped the environment, culture, and history of mankind. In their myriad forms, they serve not only as ecological actors, but also as divine messengers, embodying the profound truths found within the pages of the Bible. Everyone was excited about the eclipse. This terrible solar eclipse prophecy was. Heard as the solar eclipse on April 8th draws near, our excitement builds. This isn't just any day. It's a moment when the sun will play hide and seek with the moon, leaving us in awe. This event feels like it's straight out of a Bible story, like in Matthew 24, 29, where it talks about the sun going dark before Jesus comes back. Now we're not saying this eclipse is that moment, but it sure makes you think and feel a deep respect for the wonders of the universe. Think about it when the moon covers the sun, turning day into night for a bit. It's like nature's big shout out to the glory of God. Just like Psalm 191 says about the skies showing off God's handiwork, it's a reminder that even when things seem dark, there's a beautiful order and power in the universe that deserves our respect and awe. This brief darkness from the eclipse, it's kind of like a nudge for us to shake off anything that's holding us back and to look towards the light, Jesus' way of guiding us to better things, Kind of what Romans 13, 12 is getting it about, moving from darkness into light. During the quiet of the eclipse, it's a good time to remember what Jesus said in Luke 21, 26 about signs in the sky before he returns. 
While we're not about predicting dates, it's a call for us to stay alert, pray, and stick to our faith, ready for whenever He decides to come back. As we watch the sun and moon do their dance, let's take a moment to be still and listen, just like Psalm 46. 10 suggests finding comfort in knowing God's in control, calling us to find a deeper connection with Him and each other. Witnessing the solar eclipse is a big deal. It pulls our gaze up to the sky and deepens our thoughts about the bigger picture. It invites us to appreciate the beauty of God's work, to think about His words, and to bring us closer together in peace and harmony. Watching this play of shadows and light, we're encouraged to dive into the Bible, letting its teachings brighten our way. So, as we get ready to watch this amazing sight, let's fill our hearts with joy and our conversations with praises for God. This sky show is more than just a cool science thing. It's a reminder to live with love, help others as the Bible teaches, and be a positive light in sometimes dark times. And as the light comes back after the eclipse, let's remember Psalm 121, 6, feeling secure that God, who set up this incredible universe, is also looking out for us with endless love and kindness. The Africanized honeybee in South America has earned the moniker Killer Bee for its aggressive behavior, a direct consequence of human endeavors to breed a more productive strain of bee. This development brings to mind the Babel-like hubris of humanity, Genesis 11:19, a stark reminder that our interventions in creation can have unforeseen and often perilous outcomes. Moving across the Atlantic to sub-Saharan Africa, the Setse fly's infamy spreads with the disease it carries, sleeping sickness. This affliction echoes the biblical plagues that wrought havoc upon the people of Egypt, Exodus 7:14 to 12:36, a powerful allegory for the enduring struggle between life and death, health and sickness in the United States. The Japanese beetle is a foreign invader causing destruction reminiscent of locusts. Its life cycle and destructive power reflect the truths of Ecclesiastes, which speaks to the rhythm of life and time. Ecclesiastes 3:1 8 urging us to consider the intricate cycles of existence and the inevitability of change. The plagues that once were a divine signal to Pharaoh are mirrored today in the locust swarms of East Africa, which decimate crops and imperil food security. These modern plagues compel us to look again to the story of Joseph, Genesis 41, who through divine wisdom prepared for seven years of famine teaching us the virtue of providence. North America's forests are under siege by the emerald ash borer, an invader that silently brings ruin to ash trees. This beetle's path of destruction prompts a reflection on our role as stewards of God's creation, Genesis 2.15, highlighting the need for responsible guardianship of our natural world. Australia's battle against the red imported fire ant illustrates the unintended chaos that ensues from the human importation of species. The situation calls to mind the Tower of Babel's lesson on the limits of human endeavor and the need for divine guidance. The Caribbean faces its own unique challenge with the giant African land snail. This mollusk is a relentless consumer of vegetation a living parable of the importance of respecting the boundaries set by God in nature. Leviticus 25, 234, lest we disrupt the equilibrium he has established. Fall army worms span continents from Africa to Asia as agents of destruction to crops, resonating with the biblical imagery of the locust plague. The threat they pose to human sustenance is a call to collective action, and recalls the lessons of the seventh year of release and compassion commanded in Deuteronomy 15.12. In Australia, the indigenous use of the Wichetti grub provides sustenance, showcasing the provision of God's creation and the wisdom of living in harmony with it, much like the Israelites with manna in the wilderness, Exodus 16.31-35. 
Lastly, the cane toad in Oceania, introduced to control agricultural pests, now presents a problem of its own. This outcome serves as a modern-day illustration of the law of unintended consequences, echoing the need for foresight and humility in our interventions, values deeply rooted in the wisdom literature of the Bible, Proverbs 19, 2. As we edge closer to the solar eclipse on April 8, 2024, an air of expectancy fills the hearts of many, especially those attuned to the signs spoken of in the scriptures, Luke 21, 25, 54, which tells there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. This prophecy seems to align more closely with our current reality than ever before, drawing our attention to the celestial event predicted to cast its shadow from northern Mexico to New England. The Washington Post describes this rare celestial occurrence, where daytime will briefly turn to night, perfecting wildlife and plant behavior in profound ways, a spectacle that hasn't graced the United States in decades. This phenomenon, however, carries a deeper resonance for those who see the world through the lens of biblical prophecy. For them, this isn't merely an astronomical event. It's a moment imbued with divine significance, possibly a harbinger of God's message to humanity. Harbinger Daily's exploration into the 2024 solar eclipse, viewing it as a potential final warning, draws parallels to historical occurrences such as the New Madrid earthquakes of the early 1800s. These events, marked by two eclipses that formed an X across the U.S., preceded the most significant earthquakes in American history, leading some to ponder if the upcoming eclipse heralds impending catastrophe. In these tumultuous times marked not only by natural wonders, but also by environmental catastrophes, wars, rumors of wars, and reports of celestial anomalies, it's crucial to approach these events with a spirit of preparedness rather than fear. The scriptures offer guidance, pointing out signs of the times, including the rise of deception, the proliferation of false teachings, wars and conflicts, and supernatural signs in the heavens. These biblical motifs serve as pieces of a larger puzzle revealing the picture of a world inching closer to the pivotal moments prophesied about Christ's return. Recent years have seen an array of events that resonate deeply with biblical prophecies, stirring discussions among scholars and believers about their significance and what they may herald for the future. From environmental upheavals to geopolitical tensions and celestial wonders, these occurrences invite a contemplative examination of our times through a spiritual lens. The increasing frequency and intensity of climate-related disasters, melting polar ice caps, record-breaking temperatures, severe droughts, and devastating floods mirror the prophetic descriptions found in Revelation hinting at the beginning of birth pains mentioned in Matthew 24, 8. Scholars and theologians see these as urgent calls for humanity to repent and turn towards stewardship of God's creation, recognizing these signs as divine prompts to realign with the will of the Creator. The ongoing strife in regions such as Syria, Yemen, and the palpable tensions in Eastern Europe especially with recent escalations, bring to mind the warnings of wars and rumors of wars, Matthew 24, 6. These conflicts not only have immediate humanitarian implications, but also signify the fractured state of human relations and governance, underscoring the biblical call for peace, justice, and reconciliation among nations. The surge in reports of rare astronomical events like the blood moons, solar eclipses, and the unique alignments of planets serves as fodder for scholarly debate on their prophetic significance. These phenomena prompt a reflection on passages like Joel 2.30, 31, where wonders in the heavens are seen as precursors to the Lord's great and dreadful day. 
Scholars predict that as knowledge and technology advance, humanity's understanding and interpretation of these signs will deepen, possibly revealing more about the times we live in and God's cosmic timetable. The interpretation of these signs is diverse within the scholarly community. Some view them as literal fulfillments of biblical prophecy, indicating the imminence of end-time events, while others see them as metaphorical, urging a spiritual awakening and a return to biblical principles. The consensus, however, leans towards these events being a call to introspection, repentance, and a recommitment to living out the values of the kingdom of God in the future. Scholars anticipate a greater interdisciplinary dialogue between theology, environmental science, and political studies to understand these phenomena's significance. There's an expectation that this collaboration will not only offer deeper insights into the signs themselves, but also foster a holistic approach to addressing the underlying spiritual, ethical, and practical challenges they present. These events, seen through the prism of faith, remind us of the transient nature of our existence and the eternal sovereignty of God over creation. They serve as a clarion call to humanity to awake from complacency, to seek reconciliation with God, and to embody the principles of love, stewardship, and compassion. The ultimate implication for believers is the affirmation of hope in the promises of God for restoration and renewal as articulated in scriptures. It's a hope that transcends the immediate tumult of our world anchoring believers in the assurance of God's unchanging nature and His ultimate plan for redemption. As we navigate these tumultuous times, the spiritual journey involves discerning the signs, seeking wisdom in Scripture, and engaging in a life that reflects God's kingdom here on earth. It's a call to be vigilant, prayerful, and active participants in God's redemptive work, embodying the hope and light of Christ in a world grappling with darkness and searching for answers. With the eclipse just around the corner these days, Tempest feels like a scene setter for something monumental. It's a reminder to find shelter, not just from the storm, but in the peace and protection that comes from something greater than us all as we stand on the brink of this celestial event. It's a call to come together, look out for each other, and find comfort in the knowledge that we're all part of a much bigger plan in the tapestry of time. Each ending births a beginning, and from darkness, a beacon of light emerges guiding us through history's maze. The arrival of cicadas, an event unseen for over two centuries, evokes awe and trepidation, reminiscent of the locust swarms in ancient texts, often regarded as divine omens. Today, as we behold this spectacle, it stirs us to seek deeper meaning. Akin to those storied plagues that once shook empires to their core, fast forward to our current year 2024. Unlike their locust kin, rise not to consume but to mark an epical shift across 17 states. Their vast numbers resonate with scriptural events, beckoning us towards a collective awakening to the sublime forces that guide our existence. Intriguingly, these band CAS spending years unseen now emerge in a mass that mirrors historical swarms, yet in a display of scientific marvel and precise ecological strategy, this extraordinary occurrence invites us to contemplate life's interconnected web and see the circus chorus not just as a natural phenomenon, but as a symbol of renewal. In the relentless cycle of life that propels unseen beneath our feet, in their ascent from darkness to light, cicadas echo the ancient wisdom and prophetic scriptures that teach resilience and the promise of renewal inherent in the fabric of the natural world. As we delve into this marvel, we recall the words of Joel offering restoration and hope amidst ruin. The cicada's emergence is not merely a reminder of the world's innate resilience, but also a metaphor for our own spiritual rebirth. They prompt us to reflect on the lessons of yesteryears, 
the promises held within sacred texts, and the profound wonders that surround us. In this era marked by strange trumpet-like sounds echoing across the globe, we are urged to look beyond the visible, to question what transcends our understanding. Such sounds, recorded in over 50 instances, and drawing the world's rapt attention, challenge our notions of reality and spirituality. They elicit a spectrum of emotions from curiosity to anxiety, leaving us to ponder their significance against the backdrop of a secular world. Yet in the mystery, we find an opportunity for dialogue between science and faith, where each unexplained note may be a fragment of a greater cosmic pattern or a message from beyond. As believers, we might see these events not as portents of doom, but as calls to spiritual vigilance and readiness. They urge us towards a renewed commitment to faith, hope, and love, tenets that withstand the test of time and human tribulation. In the narrative of Revelation, the sounding of the trumpet signifies transformative events, a divine call to awaken to the spiritual battles that lie beneath our temporal struggles. As we witness such signs, let them not instill fear, but reinforce our resolve to stand firm in our faith, to be deacons of resilience, and to remain open to the transformative power of God's grace. In this moment of reflection amidst unfolding mysteries, let us unite in prayer seeking guidance through the present. Shadows may this prayer galvanize us to embody God's love on earth, to dispel divisions, and to illuminate the dark corners of this world with unity and compassion. For in His promise we find the strength to face the future, assured that we walk never alone but side by side with the Almighty who whispers life into the cosmos and breathes hope into our hearts. In faith, not fear, let us stride into the embrace of the divine, seizing the trials and blessings of this moment as fertile soil for growth and servitude. In unwavering commitment, we trust in the Lord's intricate plan, open-hearted to the paths He carves through us. May the love of God shine through our actions as we stand for justice and truth, embodying the gospel's essence through our words and deeds. In the divine cycle of giving and forgiving, we are reborn into the promise of eternal life. As this prayer reaches its crescendo, let us integrate its sacred essence into the fabric of our daily lives. The phenomena that envelop us, be they prophetic signs or Earth's natural cadence, summon us to a profound communion with our faith and the greater cosmos. This epic, with its enigmas and splendor, extends an invitation to animate the gospel with invigorated zeal, fortifying our trust in the Almighty and uniting in a fellowship that transcends fear and division. With hearts unshielded and spirits willing, let us embody God's emissaries in a world thirsting for hope and restoration. As the day's veil closes on our spiritual odyssey amidst celestial enigmas and the emergence of cicadas, we are gently reminded of the delicate symphony between the sacred and the terrestrial a symphony that urges us to delve deeper, seeking truths that lie beyond the visible. Our journey today has traversed the scriptural vistas of Revelation, contemplating the weight of unfolding events, seeking solace and guidance in the sanctuary of prayer. Our pursuit stands as a testament to our dedication to navigate the confluence of faith, prophecy, and the ever-evolving tapestry of our reality in times when the extraordinary interweaves with the fabric of our everyday existence, remaining informed and attuned to the spiritual frequency is of paramount importance. We stand at the nexus of wonder and wisdom, equipped with the courage to confront the unknown, bolstered by an unwavering faith. I extend an invitation to you, our viewer, to continue this journey with us. Your participation in liking, subscribing, and sharing not only proliferates content, but also propagates insights that challenge, inspire, and elevate. 
Your active role disseminates light in moments that may seem veiled in obscurity and apprehension. As we part, let the words of Jeremiah 29, 11 be our compass, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Let this divine assurance steer us through the labyrinth of life, recognizing that within each uncertainty lies purpose, within each trial a lesson, and within each. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive notifications about the latest videos from our channel. Please leave your comments and suggestions below in the comments section. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again in the next videos. Have a great day and see you soon.